I know this is a beauty channel, but there are, there is something I want to talk with you about that is more on the serious side. So when I was 30 years old, I had a heart attack and I want to explain to you my experience so maybe it could help you in the future if it ever happens to you because I had no idea that's what was going on. My son had just started kindergarten. He, it was his third day of school and I put him on the bus and I kind of like felt a little like uncomfortable, but like I thought maybe it was anxiety because my son and me are extremely, extremely close and he's been with me every single day of his life. I mean, he is a mama's boy. I mean, he's attached to me. So him starting school was really hard for him and I worried a lot for him as well because I wanted him to succeed and I didn't want him to be scared or anything like that. So I was thinking that I was like having a little anxiety attack and I just needed to like calm down. And at this point in time, I had a friend who um, was going through a really um, hard time. Um, her and her mother had knee surgery. So I was helping them out with like, you know, sweeping and stuff like that. Things they couldn't really get around to do because they could barely move, you know? So I was doing that. And I would go there after I put my son on the bus. And this day, I went there like I always do, but on my way there, I just kept getting this like intensifying, like, it was like a pressure, but it wasn't like an elephant is sitting on my chest pressure. So I was thinking I was just getting myself all worked up over Cameron being in school and it would go away once I got busy, you know, and distracted myself. So I got to my friend's house and I went and I was doing things, you know, sweeping and stuff. And sorry, I keep hitting the mirror. And it just, it kept like coming and then it would go away. And I just like, I would have to stop what I was doing when it would come because I would just feel like I had to, like, I just couldn't do it. I just had to stop and wait for it to go away. And I, I mean, you've seen the movies, you know that in the movies, people clench their chest and drop to the ground and pass out. That is not always the case. That is sometimes you, you just, it doesn't even seem like that's what's going on. So I was getting a little concerned and my friend convinced me, you know, call the doctor and ask them if maybe you could get in to see them just to see, you know, what's going on. If it's anxiety, maybe there's something they can do to help. So I called my doctor's office and I explained to them what was going on and they advised me to go to the hospital. They said any type of chest discomfort, chest pain, anything, shortness of breath, which came when it would intensify, I would, that's why it felt like I had to stop. And I felt like I had to like crouch down to like get a good breath, you know? So I was like, okay, well, that's not gonna happen. I'm not going to the hospital because I, somebody's gotta get my son off the bus, you know? I mean, I don't have anybody to get him off the bus for me. So, I mean, it's, I'll just wait it out. Hopefully it'll go away. And this was on a Friday and every Friday we get groceries. 
So, I went back home and I just kind of relaxed, waited for my son to get home from school. And I got him off the bus and he played with his toys and stuff. And I just kind of did as much relaxing as I could. And at, throughout the day, it did get less intense, but it didn't go completely away. So I was, uh, I was concerned with that because I'm like, okay, if this is like some anxiety thing, my son is home now. This should be going away, like completely. So, um, my husband, we weren't married at the time, but he's my husband now. He came home from work and I told him how I was feeling. I mean, I had talked to him earlier that day anyways. He called me on his break and I talked to him and we decided that he would take our son and go do the grocery shopping and I would go to, to the hospital and just get checked out, see what was going on. So I drove myself to the hospital. I explained to them what was going on. They did a blood test, which unfortunately I cannot remember the name of what they found in my blood um, that alerted them. But like they did a chest x-ray, they did um, my blood pressure, you know, all that stuff. They did an EKG, the EKG seemed fine. But in my blood was a trace of something that tells them that a heart attack has had occurred within the last like 24 to 48, 48 hours, somewhere in there. So, uh, one of the nurses came in and she told me, well, you had a heart attack. And I thought she was lying. Like, I didn't believe it. I was like, are you serious? And she, of course, was like, yeah, we don't joke around about these kinds of things. So I was like, how is that even possible? Like, it wasn't, I didn't clench my chest. There was no intense, like, pain. It was more of, like, a, a discomfort, a little pressure. Like, how is it that I had a heart attack? That's, it can't be right. So they did lovely little stress tests. And this was a chemical stress test where they pump you full of something that makes your heart race so they can see how your blood is pumping through your body and where it's having trouble getting through and stuff. And I can tell you, I hate those kinds of stress tests, hate them. I don't like it when my heart feels like it's racing. I don't like to feel that way. I mean, that was worse than the heart attack itself. Like, I felt nauseous, I was sweating. I just was like, I, it was very uncomfortable feeling. They had to give me an anti-nausea medicine because I was, I almost threw up. So, they sent me to a, another hospital that's better, better to deal with these types of issues. So I was stuck in the first hospital for the whole weekend because the heart doctors and experts, I mean, they don't work on the weekend. So if you don't get in on time during the week, you gotta wait unless it's like obviously an extreme emergency. But, so they sent me to another hospital where they had to go in and take a look and see where the problem was. And they put a tube in this vein, this artery, 
and there's a little camera that they stick in through your artery. It goes all the way in and they look in all your arteries to see if there is any blockage. I can't even, I cannot even explain how painful that was for me. They said people usually don't feel it. They had given me a drug that was supposed to kind of like make you loopy without knocking you out. It was like an awake type of anesthesia. It was supposed to help be less painful. I felt every single thing. I... <sighs> it hurt so bad it I started bawling I was I'm the type of person when I'm in pain I tend to rock back and forth I can't sit still I'm in pain that's how I deal with pain I was like kind of rocking and that obviously is a terrible idea to do when somebody is in your body so they told me I had to stop moving so I stopped moving because I don't want anything bad to happen and I bawled tears just ran down my face I felt the whole thing I felt them going through my arm in my chest and then they told me that they found a blockage and I mean before I even went in there there was like my male nurse was joking like you're too young they're not gonna find anything they'll probably just look and you know you'll be good you're too young for any of this to happen so i'm thinking okay well these people see this stuff every day i'm sure they probably know things they told me they found a blockage and that they had to put in a stint which is this I don't even know how to explain it. It's this little thing that they put in your artery and then they expand it and it expands your artery so the blood can get through better and doesn't clot up in that spot. So they had to put a stent on the same thing and go through and put the stent in. And I mean, my experience wasn't like most people's. I mean, most people don't even feel it. I felt the whole entire thing, the whole thing. And when they, you know, got done, they wheeled me out, I was bawling I could not stop crying like to the point where I was like <laughs> like bawling and they had to put a stent in my left anterior descending artery which is oh, if you can see it's a little blurry is right the artery and I have to carry this card with me if anything happens on this card it tells them where there is a stent luckily I have one for now and I pray 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 I never ever ever have to go through that again and So it was like super traumatizing for me to the point where afterwards I was like, if this ever happens again, I'm not going to let them go in and put a stent in because that it hurt so bad. My arm, I couldn't move my arm for like a month. It was swollen and my whole arm was like bruised. It was so painful. So it they still aren't 100% sure why I had a heart attack, but 
my family has a history a big like a family history on my mother's side of heart disease I mean just about everybody on my mom's side has had heart problems my mom unfortunately passed away in 2003 with congestive heart failure and my aunt Jackie also passed away exactly five years after my mom to the day of I believe it was the same thing I believe it was heart failure so I mean if your family has a significant history of heart disease I suggest you go to your primary care doctor you explain everything that you know if you if there's things you don't know you ask family members and try to get as much information about every single person in your family that has heart disease and you tell your primary care doctor about that and tell them that you want a complete like checkup for your heart because you want to be ahead of it you don't want to have the heart attack first you want to try to catch it before it gets to that point so that is just really really important so if it is something that runs in your family please get checked out please i was 30 years old when i had a heart attack that's too young so just remember it, that heart attacks do not all feel the same. Sometimes it's like pain in your shoulders. My my grandpa, um, gosh, it was like a few weeks after my heart attack, had a heart attack and he had shoulder pain. He had pain in his shoulders. He thought he pulled a muscle. So he went to the hospital thinking, oh, you know, Maybe they can give me some medicine for my pulled muscle. And they told him he had a heart attack. So, I mean, it can, it's better to go get checked out and it not be anything than to just assume it's going to go away and not get checked out and heaven forbid it end your life later on. If I did not go get checked out and I just was waited for it to just go away, because I'm sure that pain would have been gone by the next day, I'm sure. So, I mean, if I had just waited it out the next time it happened, it could have killed me. I had 97% blockage. So, I mean, that's, that's a lot of blockage and that is not, not something you want to take lightly at all so just if you feel like something isn't right your chest doesn't feel right you have like shoulder pain or you just something doesn't feel right if you feel like you're getting out of breath easier and you're not really doing anything that should be making you out of breath I mean just go go get checked out Cause you'd be amazed i mean you go get checked out and what you thought was no big deal ends up being a very big deal so i just wanted to share my experience and hope that maybe you know it could help somebody else down the road get checked out and save their own life so i just really thought it was a good idea to share that experience with you so I know it's, it's kind of a depressing video, but I don't want anything to happen to any of you, so it's better to get out there. But I hope this video was informative and will be in the back of your mind. I mean, heaven forbid anything happens to you, you've, or I mean, maybe even... Some of you know has some symptoms and it, you, this video pops into your head and you get them some help. So I just thought it was really important to get this out there. So 
I hope this was informative. If you have any questions, if I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, leave a comment below and I will answer any question I can. And I hope you keep tuning into my channel because you like my beauty content as well as my informativeness. I don't think that's a word. And other issues. Yeah, so hope to see you in my next video.